Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. There he is, Wild Man Steve Brill. Why don't you uh, tell everybody who you are, what you do? Okay, I'm a naturalist and environmental educator. I teach foraging edible wild plants, uh, what you can eat in the parks, in your backyard, in local natural areas. I also show poisonous plants in case you're having problems with the boss. I do public tours. I work with schools, garden clubs, scouts, museums, nature centers, parks departments. I do birthday parties. I'm a vegan and I'm always in the kitchen experimenting with wild foods. My website is wildmansteveBrill, B-R-I-L-L dot com. I'm also an artist and an author. Great. And you ha and uh, people can get your book on your website? Yeah. Get it from me, signed. Then if I eat a poison plant and die, it gets very valuable. And if you get it from uh, Amazon, uh, the book business gets just about all the money. Great. But if you eat a poison plant, they might not want your book to stick <laughs> They, they might not think it's good. Well, so far, the only poisonous thing, uh, stuff I ate was junk food, and that was when I was a kid and a teenager. And you survived? Barely. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, it's great to see you again. Everybody check out Steve's site, and we'll go look on the tour at some of the things he has here. There's Steve's book, uh, Identifying and Harvesting Edible and Medicinal Plants of the Wild and Not So Wild Places, Wild Man Steve Brill. Uh, check out his website by the same name, and I had this book for many, many years. It's wonderful. It's one of several books he has out, and uh, check out his very informative website. Wild Here we go. Okay, our first plant is wood sorrel. Very common and very delicious. It has three leaves that are shaped like hearts. People confuse this with clover, but clover has oval leaves, no hearts. Still confusing. The way I keep this straight is the wood sorrel, because of the hearts, reminds me of my beautiful wife. Whereas the clover, which has oval leaves and no hearts, reminds me of my ex-girlfriend who ran off with another guy on Valentine's Day 15 years ago. You could be more sympathetic. Um, and this tastes like lemonade. Where's the... Where did the little girl go? There she is. Here she is. Do you want to try We have those in our yard. Here you go. Yeah. He's a... Try you a can bite. eat this. It's good. Try that. <laughs> what do you think? Can you eat good? that? Mm. <laughs> okay, who wants to try some? You can eat the banana, good, huh? take fruits or the leaves. Only part you don't need is the stem because it's too tough. You're going to pass them out. Mm, wow, it does. This is good. And salads Maybe we have those in our house. Mm. Nothing poisonous looks like it. Um, it grows, yeah, it grows around the country. And the um, only problem is that short season, spring, summer, and fall. <laughs> <laughs> this is called the uh, epizote, Teloxys ambrosoides. It has alternate leaves, that means each leaf is alone, they're not in pairs. Uh, the leaves are long and somewhat broad, and they have teeth, stop biting, they have teeth on the edge, and it's very fragrant, smells resinous, mm. piney. And it's called Epizote, E-P-A-Z-O-T-E. -E. This is a major culinary herb from Mexico. Even kill them, and it's harmless to everyone else. But you can tell ahead of time who should not eat this by their occupation. Do not eat this if you're a lawyer or a politician because it kills parasites. Oh. Now, um, Hey, we have a pink mulberry tree here, and these are quite delicious. You eat them like this. <laughs> here, tell me if this isn't one of the best fruits you've ever eaten. They're a distant relative of figs, so you get a little bit of a fig flavor. Can you dry these? Uh, yeah, you can put them in a food dehydrator. Oh, man. Yeah, the big danger is falling in the lake and drowning. We got it, we got it, okay. 
there. People aren't getting any. They're the mulberries. Good job. You get a mosquito bite. Rub this on the mosquito bite right after you've been bit. Jewelweed. And uh, mosquitoes love me, and I get really big welts when I get bit. You rub this right when you've gotten bit and reapply it so the bite stays wet for 15 minutes. It will cure the mosquito bite. If you touch poison ivy by mistake, and I had large groups where we found mm. wild strawberries mixed with poison ivy, and the strawberries were so good that nobody worried about it until the last strawberry was eaten and everyone got really scared. Uh, we rub this on our exposed areas of our skin. Before you get the rash, you don't get the poison ivy rash. This is good for cuts, for scrapes, for uh, any kind of rashes, for cooking burns, for acne, any kind of skin irritation. Chemists have even taken, a chem uh, synthesized a chemical from jewelweed and mixed it into an ointment. And then they apply the ointment where the sun don't shine. What did they invent? Preparation. Yes, preparation H. So this stuff, uh, this stuff works. Anything that hurts your skin. And there's tons of it. It's very common. You can't get rid of it by picking it here. If anyone wants, wants some, here, come down. Come down. Jewelry. It's a jewelry. With a little bit of reddish on it, purslane, portulaca, oreasia. Uh, uh, it's great in stews, it's great in salads. Uh, purslane. Yeah, let me see. I think I saw some down here. Let me take a look. There's purslane. It's good for, we made a stew from it, it's really good. Yeah, we eat them raw. It's very raw. Very, like, very, you know, like, I'm not a stew, but you see me stew. We know, we got a bunch. It, it thickens, it's a natural thickener, so it will thicken there the stew. There Has a leaf that looks like a sheep's face, with a nose and two ears. Everyone see the pattern? Yep. <laughs> The human brain, sort of like a computer program, automatically makes patterns out of things. Probably an evolutionary adaptation to see uh, predators or prey that are camouflaged. Uh, so you look at clouds, you look at ink blots, immediately your brain makes up a pattern. And this one is a little like a sheep's face. And uh, not related to wood sorrel, but also very lemony flavored. And quite delicious. Here, pass some around. Sheep sorrel, you eat the leaves. And there's, there's quite a bit of it along the edge here. This is a garden and the gardeners keep trying to kill it and it keeps growing. Here's a sheep sorrel. Looks like a sheep. Here, you can have these. Yeah, this is June berry and it looks like it's finished. And there's one a really good mulberry tree one. down here. Let's see if there's anything left on it. Oh, there's, there's one there's June one. berry up there. Yeah, try it. These are really delicious. Unless they went rotten. This tastes a little like a blueberry, an apple, an almond. Here, here's the last June berry of the year. Since you found it, Matt, you get to try it. Thanks. So June berry's a bush. Yes. Well, there are trees too. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's a lot of species. It's a genus. Okay. How did it taste? It was good. Yeah. Like a weird blueberry. Those are more Juneberry. Like Juneberry? Oh wow! Yeah. Look at all. There are some Juneberry trees in here. Oh, these are so good. These are Juneberries. Everyone, make sure you're getting some. Welcome to the homeless tour. These are all a bunch of homeless people. <laughs> Looking for the next meal. <laughs> They're imitating chimpanzees. <laughs> right? Hey, that's right. Mulberries. Uh, mulberries. Are you homeless? No. <laughs> but I still like them. What, homeless people? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. What about the mulberries? And the mulberries are good too. <laughs> Very good. Paul's getting mulberries. <laughs> There's all these mulberries here. Raining down.
What's this guy done? No man has gone to work. So they have June berries, mulberries. We pick some purslane. We pick some sheep sorrel. Some a bunch of stuff, and we got a bunch more to go. This is Central Park, the homeless diet. You should try it. Happy foraging. Have a great uh, wild food dinner and a great raw life. All right, thank you.